taught us that, that the way to find common ground in a crisis is to look for the higher ground. And last week, Chairman Comer and I came together to reach for that higher ground. We made a joint statement condemning the mass shooting and assassination attempt against former President Trump as a grave assault on our democracy. As we wrote, we are united in condemning all political violence. I join the good chairman in expressing condolences to the family of Corey Comparatori and in sending healing wishes to the wounded victims also of this atrocious for the American people act of violence. Who are seeking answers Some about the attempted assassination. That former President good Trump morning. escaped this Today's AR-15 hearing is for the American attack. Unlike so many thousands of our fellow citizens who have been killed or seriously wounded in other AR-15 shootings. Whether this miracle is of divine provenance or of an adventitious nature will be up to each of us to ponder. But our job in Congress is not simply to marvel at miracles or count on good luck, but to act as public policy legislators to do whatever we can to prevent future pub political violence, attempted assassinations, and mass shootings. The chairman and I are thus determined to get to the bottom of the stunning security failures that enabled this 20-year-old lone gunman who borrowed his father's AR-15 to perpetrate a mass shooting and assassination attempt at an event protected by the Secret Service as well as state and local police. We'll ask hard questions of Director Shield today in order to identify and understand the shocking security failures that occurred and to help transform the operations of the Secret Service to prevent anything like this from happening again. But we can't let ourselves off the hook either, dear colleagues. What happened in Butler, Pennsylvania was a double failure, the failure by the Secret Service to properly protect former President Trump and the failure of Congress to properly protect our people from criminal gun violence. We must therefore also ask hard questions about whether our laws are making it too easy for potential assassins to obtain firearms generally and the AR-15 specifically. Mr. Comparatore, former President Trump, and the other rally attendees wounded in Butler are now members of a club no one wants to belong to, the thousands of people who have fallen victim to mass shootings. Last year, we had 655 mass shootings in America, defined as four or more people being shot or killed in a single event, not including the shooter. 712 people died and nearly 2,700 people were wounded in these attacks in 2023. Mass shootings are commonplace. They happen at political rallies and constituent meetings in our elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools, in churches, synagogues, and mosques, in movie theaters and parades, in nightclubs and grocery stores, in concerts, and on street corners. Here are the worst mass shootings in the last uh, 11 or 12 years. The list is a grim reminder of the horrific damage and death wrought by assault weapons and the AR-15 in particular that have taken the lives of <clears throat> our children, parents, colleagues, and neighbors. This is a, a, a very partial list. Mass shootings have become so frequent that we don't even hear about them anymore. Since the mass shooting in Butler, there have already been at least 10 additional mass shootings in America, two of which took place the same day that former President Trump was targeted. One of the mass shootings <clears throat> on that violent Saturday, July 13th, happened at 11 p.m. at a nightclub in Birmingham, Alabama, where four people were shot dead and 10 others wounded. This means, amazingly, that the Butler attack was not even the deadliest mass shooting to happen in America on that day. A weapon that can be used to commit a mass shooting in an event under the full protection of the Secret Service, together with dozens of state and local police, is obviously an intolerable threat to the rest of us who do not receive such protection and obviously does not belong in our communities. It's time to pass universal background checks and build on this administration's work to ensure that we permanently close the loopholes in the Brady Law for gun show purchases, online purchases, and private sales to prevent those weapons from getting into the hands of people we know to be a threat to others. What happened in Butler shows why even closing these loopholes, however, will not keep assault weapons out of the hands of potential assassins and mass murderers. Under federal law and in the vast majority of states, even young people not old enough to buy a beer legally can legally purchase and own the AR-15 and carry it in public. The shooter in Butler used his father's AR-15. We have to find the courage and resolve 
to pass a ban on the AR-15 and other assault weapons. A ban has broad support. Even the New York Post loudly endorsed such a ban in 2019. We have passed an assault weapons ban before. Republicans and Democrats together passed it in 1994. Alas, in 2004, we allowed the ban to expire. We know this weapons ban worked. One study found that in the decade that followed the ban's lapse, mass shootings went back up 183% and deaths from mass shootings went up 239%. But even as we change the Secret Service and act to ban weapons of war like the AR-15, we still will have fallen short of our duty if we fail to denounce every instance of politically motivated violence in whatever form it takes. Republicans and Democrats, again, have come together to denounce this assassination attempt, just as we did the violent attempts on the lives of our colleagues, Representative Stephen Scalise and Representative Gabby Giffords, and on Paul Pelosi, the husband of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who was attacked and brutalized in his home. And in the immediate aftermath of the January 6th mass violence waged against Congress and the Vice President and the constitutional transfer of power, Democrats and Republicans alike, including Senator McConnell, Chairman Comer, and other colleagues, all denounced this violent assault on our democracy that wounded approximately 140 officers from the U.S. Capitol Police and the Metropolitan Police Department. And I commend them for acting to uh, denounce that attack, just as Democrats move swiftly to denounce the attack on Congressman Calise, Scalise. Police scientists, political scientists tell us that authoritarian attacks on democratic institutions begin with political parties refusing to disavow or openly embracing political violence. We have to reject that on a strong bipartisan basis, as Chairman Comer and I have done, even as we ensure our Secret Service is up to its vital task of protecting presidents and candidates, and as we work to ensure that America, the streets of our country, are free from the violence of weapons of war. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back to you. Thank you.